of cannabis look exactly like the wild non-medical type. Now, what are some of the confounding issues regarding the biological responses to white cannabis? Among the Undokwa people of Delta State, cannabis is often used as a vegetable. It is possible that the variety that they use has far, uh, far less THC concentration. It is also possible that Undokwa people are genetically conformed to handle cannabis differently. Now, there are questions. Are there more psychotic persons in Undokwa than other areas of Nigeria? No one knows. Are black more susceptible to the harmful effects of cannabis? No one knows. Studies need to be commissioned in Nigeria to answer some of these confounding questions. Next question. What might the nation gain by legalizing the cultivation, distribution, and sale of medicinal cannabis? Theoretically, ladies and gentlemen, professional colleagues, cannabis-based materials and medicinal products would be available, mark my word, would be available for use by citizens and for export. There will be opportunities for jobs and enhance the economy. Yes, all these seem to be the focus of the agitators or advocators of legalization. On the other hand, the nation may suffer from increased cases of mental illness, addiction, and its health and socioeconomic sequelae. There will be increase in crime. Let us remember that one can hardly distinguish between the wide and therapeutic types. Why are those looking at the economic benefits of legalizing cannabis not promoting the cultivation of cash crops such as cocoa, palm produce, and rubber? These crops do well in the regions of Edo, Owen West in particular, my local government that is, and on those states, Idori, and around there, or say local government in those states that are notorious for the cultivation of cannabis are also the best places for some of these crops that I mentioned. Next question. Has the nation been able to control the sale, distribution, and use of other substances of abuse? Again, the, my response is no. The nation currently battles with the distribution, sale, and use of medically useful substances like tramadol, pentazosin, and codeine. Is, is the inability to enforce the provisions of the law a basis to legalize cannabis? I would say no. That international borders are porous does not suggest the withdrawal of immigration officers from their duty post. Alarming crime rates such as the nation is currently experiencing is no reason to sack the police. We might as well say that there should be no law limiting the sale and use of ethical drugs because the laws concerning them have been poorly enforced. And perhaps the last question, what has the nation done with our well-established herbal medicines? In Nigeria, we have very many well-established and thoroughly researched herbal medicines with very wide safety margin. Examples include bitter cola, bitter leaf, king of bitters, andrographis, that is. For example, the therapeutic spectrum, as I know it, because I have research in that area, the therapeutic spectrum of andrographis is mind-blowing from anti-asthma to anti-Zika virus. This, to me, should be promoted instead of cannabis. Cannabinoids such as cannabidiol, so as Epidiolex, and Nebiximol, so as Sativex, may be approved for medical use. But even so, newer synthetic cannabinoids with better pharmacological profiles are underway. Cultivation of cannabis for medical purposes may soon be overtaken by advances in pharmaceutical science. Chairman, um, moderator, my concluding thoughts. There is medicinal cannabis, but we lack the capacity to distinguish between the medic medicinal one, that is the one with low concentration of THC, and the white variety. Our laws are very poorly enforced, so that legalizing medicinal can cannabis is tantamount, in my opinion, to legalizing the white variety as well. There are medicines for diseases for which medicinal cannabis is being promoted. In any case, cannabis-derived medicines can be imported like others if they meet the criteria for inclusion in the federal government essential medicines list and if other regulatory concerns have been addressed as well. If governments are interested in promoting herbal medicines for health and economic reasons, they should consider the very many herbal medicinal plants that have been very well researched and have very wide margin of safety. Whatever the merits that exist, the demerits, in my opinion, are more. And I advise that Nigeria should hurry slowly in, a, in legalizing cannabis cultivation, distribution, possession, and use. Let me repeat again, the demerits to me are more. And I advised 
And I advise that Nigeria should hurry slowly, make haste slowly in legalizing the cultivation, distribution, and possession, use of cannabis. Nigeria is peculiar in many respects. Mr. Moderator and distinguished audience, my colleagues, I want to thank you for listening. These are my views. Um, God bless every one of us uh, as we make progress. Thank you very much for listening. I hope I've not exceeded the 15 minutes that you have allotted to me. No. Thank you so much, Professor okay. Ray. The timing is just apt. No, you are able to manage within the 15 minute schedule. Even when I sent you a reminder, you beat it. Thank you so much. I believe so many of us have questions boiling our mind. And I believe strongly every one of us will have opportunity to ask the questions. We have enough time to answer various questions. Professor Ray Vuzolua has actually positioned his papers and his opinion on the subject. So at this juncture, I'll be calling on the Professor NN Wana to also make uh, some sense out of this topic. And uh, how will he see it from his own perspective? Thank you very much, Professor Wanang. You are welcome to the podium. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, moderate to distinguished colleagues. I sincerely appreciate you all. I am also happy to speak after Professor Ray Ozolua because he has exhausted the pharmacological aspect to which I have made uh, uh, some preparations on them. It's a very beautiful thing. There's no need for me to have a repeat of the pharmacology and other areas that he had already stated. But let me take us down to memory lane. Uh, worldwide, sometimes around 1844, the first publication on medicinal properties of Indian hemp was made by one William Lely. It was published in Lancet on the 27th of April, 1984, I mean, 1844. Between 1844, where people knew the medicinal value, it is only after around World War II that Nigeria came to know first about Indian hemp. It is historically stated that they must have known Indian hemp through soldiers, through sailors that came into the country. But between the period that they came in and now, Nigeria is rated in the top four of the industries that have been investing or the highest users of cannabis worldwide. In Africa, we have Nigeria and Zambia leading. Then we have USA and Canada from other countries. I'm giving this narration so that you can see if from the 18th uh, century, other countries have been are known to have cannabis. But we in Nigeria, we just knew this about uh, less than 100 years ago. And yet we have rated this much. Let me also remind us here that when you check information, you realize that Nigeria is the eighth largest consumer of cannabis worldwide. And it is a very, very a terrible situation now. You look at Ikiti State, Ondo State, Oyo State, about 10% of every youth in Nigeria, I mean, 10% is assumed to be consuming cannabis. When you look at the population, we are talking about 20 million Nigerians. In Ekiti State, Sometimes in 2017, they had Indian farm that was about 246 tons. That same period, on those state had about 5,000 hectares. And this 5,000 hectares in on those state is arguably the largest Indian farm in the world, in the plantation in the world. Or your state had about 1,000 seeds of Indian hemp seized by NDLA, and it was discovered that they have about 24 hectares in a very thick forest, which they do, they, they cultivate uh, in their hem. Edo State, Osu State, Delta State, all of them have destroyed plenty farmlands of Indian hem or wheat. Looking at what is happening, our attention is just on the global perspective, whereby cannabis cultivation is expected to give us a huge amount of money. It is documented that by 2026, we're going to have about 45.5 billion dollars from India hemp. But is that just what we want? Let us look at it again from the other areas. Initially, people have used it for recreation, people have used it for ritual, people have used it for spiritual needs, more often popularized by musicians and all that. But the question is, is Nigeria really ripe to legalize India hemp? What about the tramadol? What about the benelin that we had a lot of uh, an array of questions and difficulties about how to handle it. What about the ordinary drug distribution on the street? 
If you go to the markets today, if you go to the motor parks today, you will see people hawking drugs like cola and oil. I'm happy that Professor Ray spoke at length on the medicinal values of India ham and all that. Picture one, India ham had been repeatedly abused in the treatment of epilepsy. I did my PhD on epilepsy, and I investigated also the Solano nigrum, which has excellent anti-epileptic property. If government is looking at anti-epileptic property, have we exhausted the herbs that we have on ground that have already been established and thoroughly investigated by scientists? Go to the universities in this country, go to pharmacy schools. You will see an array of publications from international journals, publications on their shelves, research works on their shelves on these uh, plants. We have Garcinia cola. We have Cucumis metulliferus. We have Sucuridaca longe pendiculata. All these are plants that have anti-inflammatory property, they have uh, anti-hypertensive property, have anti-epileptic property, and all those plenty, the arrays that uh, they have been reeled out that cannabis has. Of truth, Nigeria lacks the capacity. Nigeria is not ripe. We cannot regulate the Indian hemp uh, legalization or market that we're seeing. Even the regularization, the enforcement is something. Our borders are porous. Crime rate will increase. Looking at even the countries, that had legalized India hemp, Colorado, for instance, and Washington, for instance, the crime rate in those countries have increased. Taking it from another perspective, the number of psychotic cases in their hospital and their psychiatric units in Colorado, for instance, doubled. The number of patients that have been, especially youths between 18 and 25, that, that visited psychiatric units in these two areas, scenarios that I've given you doubled. If it is so, these are countries that have a very strong legal bone. What do we have in Nigeria? What is our enforcement capacity? How have we enforced the capacities of the ordinary blood distribution on the streets? Have we succeeded? We have a lot of porous issues. Prescription medicine only are being littered on our streets. We have plenty issues of drug resistance. But our own, we are just looking at the efficacy, what has been documented by the white man. Do we have enough scientific evidence here in Nigeria? Have you even known that there are different grades of the cannabis we are talking about. The cannabis in Nigeria, the ones in Plateau State where I stay, could be different from the one that is harvested in Delta State through biodiversity, like what my colleague Adelia stated. But we should not just be carried away by what we see on Google, what we read on, on, on Wikipedia and all that. We should look up the responsibility of protecting our citizens, the responsibility of protecting health and the interests of Nigerians. If we decide that we are going to harvest cannabis and expunge, the KSC, which is responsible for the hallucina hallucination. Are we sure we are not going to grow another hydra-hated phenomenon? Are we sure we can have a proper distribution, I mean, uh, disposal of the isolated or the extracted ingredient that causes CNS activity? The answer is we cannot do that. We lack the capacity. We have several instances whereby we have seen our, uh, we have exposed ourselves to a lot of dangers. How have we been dwelt with the tramadol that we, we had to wait for somebody from uh, a, a reporter from BBC to come and tell us that, yes, the kind of people are doing high on tramadol. Was it not somebody that came outside the country to tell us, why are we trying to jump into an area that we have not investigated much? Those countries that have legalized in their hand, they don't even know the long-term implication. By adventure, if we have decided that we are going to use them in the treatment of epilepsy, in the treatment of nausea and vomiting, treatment of cancer, do we know the long-term implication of the usage of these extracts? The answer is no investigation, no research has already been done in those items. We are just jumping because we have looked at the financial uh, status, we have looked at the financial gain that we are going to get from bringing in this drug. Whether it is uh, how many billion naira government is interested to get those monies on hand. But we have a lot, like uh, my colleague said, we have cocoa, nobody has talked about that. We have sugar cane, nobody has talked about that. We have herbs that we can even decide to have a council, a laboratory that will uh, principally investigate on this things and then we develop them into drugs. My take, I think we are rushing into this because the white man says it is economically fruitful. We are rushing into this because most likely too, a lot of those that are advocating or pushing or rushing into it are either uh, trying to legalize it because they, they want to openly enjoy the benefit of probably what they're doing secretly. Because if you have known someone that is a victim of drug abuse and drug misuse, you will be the last person to think of legalizing 
in their hand. Not even worldwide, not to talk of Nigeria, that we have a lot of porous, very, very regulatory incapacities that is haunting us and our progress. I think I'll stop here so that we can I'll spend some time and then we receive questions from our people. Moderator, my distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I sincerely uh, thank you for this uh, brief background and addition to what Professor Ray has said. God bless you. Thank you so much, Professor Wanang. Uh, this is a beautiful uh, presentation, and uh, you have actually given us the, demograph the demographic uh, distribution and how the topic of cannabis legalization is actually getting fuel from those people that have the opportunity of thinking is an opportunity for them to do some things they are doing the secret openly. Well, thank you so much. Uh, question will be coming and we believe strongly you will be ready to answer some of the questions that will be coming shortly. At this juncture, I would like to welcome to podium our immediate past chairman, board of fellow from the Society of Nigeria, pharmacist Chiedu Modi Esquire, to present his own position. And as a legal uh, luminary, he will also be able to paint some legal pictures onto the topic of discussion this afternoon. So, Premises Chair Modi, you are welcome to the podium, sir. You have 15 minutes to make your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, moderator. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you very loud. Good. Yes. Um, it would have been very unnecessary to repeat some of the things said by my co uh, discussant, but you need to build an argument. So you pardon me for some repetitions, they are rather necessary. Um, we can't help mentioning the chemical components of cannabis. I won't go into the species that are available, um, but you can't help mentioning the chemical components uh, of cannabis. Uh, it is these two components, THC and CBD, that confer on marijuana the therapeutic and psychotropic properties they have. They affect pain, mood, and sleep memory, what THC is responsible for, which THC is responsible for the psychotropic properties, while CBD has mainly the medicinal attributes of cannabis. There's no gain saying that um, CBD has some therapeutic values, but the issue is, uh, are they the only, uh, is that the only medicine that can take care of the the, 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 the ailments that treat. Well, uh, CBD uh, has been shown to be a potent painkiller used in oncology to stop the proliferation of malignant cells in hypoglycemia and so on and so forth. It has anti-seizure properties. It's used to control neurodegenerative diseases as a result of neuro neuroprotection properties. It's also used in dermatology for, to treat asthma. Well, because CBD uh, can protect the neurons at the uh, cannabis brain receptors, the psychotropic activities of THC, where they occur in recreational cannabis, is neutralized by CBD, uh, insofar as the THC is in negligible quantities. Of the two uh, chemicals present, THC is a ma major psychotropic constituent of cannabis. It affects mood, memory, damages, damages uh, brain receptor irreversibly, particularly in young, uh, in young people who indulge in uh, cannabis smoking crazy euphoria and the rest of it. But WHO has reported that cannabis induced uh, psychotic depression is high in Nigeria, which shows that many Nigerians are involved in the, uh, uh, in the use of cannabis. This is without prejudice to the fact that it is an illegal drug and it has been criminalized. Now, the Nigerian cannabis, that is the crux of the matter. The Nigerian cannabis, it is not the ordinary cannabis that is legalized in other climes. 
According to Obiawo, who has done research for over 20 years in this field, all the samples of cannabis investigated have a preponderance of THG, almost to the exclusion of CBD, which is the one that has some therapeutic uses. There is a variety with the street name Arizona, uh, found particularly in Ondo, that has a ratio of THC to BDC of 140 to 1. This ratio of THC to CBD is, is to my mind, is, um, is devastating to whoever may try it. Uh, so we, we have to be sure of the cannabis we are uh, romancing with, the Nigerian cannabis. Um, in fact, I, uh, from this lecture, from what I know, um, the topic should have been legalizing the Nigerian cannabis. It's not the ordinary cannabis in other places. Well, recreational or medicinal cannabis. The National Institute of Drug Abuse defines medicinal cannabis or recreational cannabis as using the whole unprocessed marijuana plant or its basic extract to treat symptoms of illness and other conditions. Usually in countries where cannabis has been legalized, you only have marijuana containing 0.3% or less. Such le legislation does not have in contemplation the kind of cannabis we have in Ondo State, the kind of cannabis we have in Ekiti, or the kind of cannabis we have in, uh, in Delta with a ratio of 140 to one in favor of THC, which is the Nigerian situation. For the countries that have legalized cannabis, there are some preconditions before the uh, legalization. From the what is legalized is medical or recreational cannabis with less than 0.3% THC. Obviously, not the Nigerian type of cannabis. Despite the seeming harmlessness of the recreational cannabis or medical cannabis with less than 0.3% THC, the countries that have legalized or that are contemplating legalizing cannabis have formidable structures and systems for regulation and control of the drug. Well, I'm in community pharmacy, so I cannot talk about the, um, the position of our regulatory uh, agencies because I can be a, 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 an easy prey. But we all know how formidable these structures and systems we have in Nigeria. Consider a situation where we were indicted very hopelessly by, by WHO that over 80% of anti-malaria drugs we, stay, we, 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 we found in the Nigerian market is fake, is pathetic, is sad. In such jurisdictions, the governments have and they display the political will to enforce laws that regulate and control the product. Do we have such political will? Do we have the structures to regulate controlled drugs? We must consider if we have the right environment and atmosphere to enforce laws, or whether such laws for enforcement of cannabis, if eventually is legalized, will grow mold in the textbooks. Legal the legalization of, uh, uh, of the usual, the legalizations that usually come before the legalization the legislations that usually come before the legalization of cannabis in those areas where cannabis has been uh, legalized, they, 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 they tend to reduce to the barest minimum the collateral illegalities that come with the legalization of cannabis. There is a set of legalization that are enforced to the letter in places where cannabis has been legalized. They include, but not limited to, one, registration and licensing of vendors. Cultivation and farming are controlled by the appropriate authorities. Smoking is restricted to designated area and obviously not within public spaces. In Nigeria, where cannabis is 
illegal. We know that at joints, in public places, cannabis can be seen openly with audacity being smoked uh, around. In those areas where cannabis has been legalized, clients, customers can only make purchases with verified identifications. Here, do we, can, can we identify those who take our dangerous drugs, who, who, who buy our dangerous drugs? We cannot. It is difficult, if not impossible. In areas where cannabis has been legalized, the government goes the extra mile of doing price control simply to ensure that the legalized cannabis is affordable and available to some extent to those who want to purchase, to purchase it so that they won't be attracted to the black market where they may have the good, the bad, the ugly to buy. They want to be sure that it is the recreational cannabis, the, 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 the medical cannabis that is only sold to your citizens. They also have in, in position in, in, in force re age re restrictions. The product is not available to people less than 21 years of age. Vendors are barred from selling edible varieties of products. Above all, adverts of the products are strictly regulated. These are some of the structures that are put on ground before the uh, legalization of cannabis. Well, let's look at the concept of law because to legalize cannabis is making a law that says you can now have cannabis uh, without being criminalized. The issue to be determined by this entire debate or discussion is whether the law to legalize cannabis is a good law or a bad law. To be able to do this, it will be necessary to examine the concept of law and its expectations. There are two schools of thought when it comes to determining what law is and the goodness or the badness of law. These are the positivist school of thought and then the natural law school. The, positive, the positivist hold that law is a command by the person or sovereign who has the authority to make law. Once such a law is promulgated, it beholds everybody to comply. This is uh, without prejudice to whether the law is, uh, is oppressive or not. The point is that it has been made by that man, by that person who has the power to make the law and then he has prescribed a punishment for non-compliance. This is in contradistinction from the natural law school. The in the natural law school, natural law school of thought about law, they hold that law must serve the good cause of a community and must foster the good, com the common good of the entire community, not the common good of some, the common good of the entire community. The, 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 this natural law school uh, uh, legal philosophers also state that the, the law is not to benefit the governor, but it's for the benefit almost exclusively for the government. And so if a governor pushes for the legalization of of cannabis uh, with the anticipation of any income to do whatever um, that by the concept of law of the natural law school uh, uh, philosophy is a, is a bad law. The good law must be seen primarily as a product of reason and must stand the test of critical reason. It must come from um, well reasoned uh, processes and then projected to ensure that it doesn't do any harm to the community. A law is good if it serves the common good of the entire community. And if a law is unreasonable, 
it will automatically be a void of moral authority. And so these uh, legal philosophers put in morality in the quality of laws that they, they, they classify as good laws. And if we are not to apply this to the law, legalizing um, uh, uh, cannabis, we will be able to say whether that uh, law is a good law or a bad law. There are two judgmental uh, tools um, coined, um, projected for this examination. One is utilitarianism headed by J Jeremy Bentham, Thomas Aquinas, and John Phoenix, and others. They use this to verify the goodness or badness of, of any law, to advocate that a good law is one that brings happiness and pleasure to the greatest number of people, and the one that brings pain to the least number of people in a community. And so when you pick up a law, when the law is in the process, and then you apply this judgmental um, calibrator, what is the utilitarian use of the law? How will it bring joy or pleasure to the entire community? Or how will it bring pain or uh, sorrow to the entire community? And that was pushed further by John Finney is the concept of consequentialism. This is another judgmental tool put in place by the natural law tool of thought in deciding if a law is good or bad. Consequentialism is hinged on the premise that the overall outcome of any piece of legislation determines whether the law is a good law or a bad law. If the overall outcome of legalizing marijuana is increasing admission in the psychiatric hospital, then the consequence, applying the rule of consequentialism, shows that it is a bad law because the outcome will create more uh, mad people on our streets. Already, we have more than we can contend with. There is an illusion that the, the, the legalization of uh, cannabis is going to end Nigeria foreign exchange. This uh, is being taunted by the proponents of that law. Um, legalizing the Nigerian cannabis has been taunted as being capable of earning for the country uh, some uh, um, foreign exchange. But to this, I say that it is mere air bubble because through the instrumentality of the international narcotic control agencies, the Nigerian cannabis will not leave the shores of Nigeria as a result of its high content of THC. I want everybody to take note of that. Ghana knows that the Nigerian cannabis has a high content of THC. And that a, 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 a single pop is enough to block the cannabis brain receptors in, a, 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 in the brain. And this is irreversible, particularly with young children. And so people should uh, trash, you know, should um, think less about any foreign exchange. If therefore the Nigerian cannabis is legalized and it becomes more readily available because that is what it is um, going to be. Now that it's under, uh, in the pot and covered, we still have expanse of land being uh, uh, cultivated of cannabis. We still have tons of, the, of weed being transshipped from one area to the other. We still have people who do mineral jobs smoking uh, cannabis freely, um, then what will happen when it is legalized? Or is it, to quote my immediate uh, past uh, speaker, is it for them now to have a free day to do what they have been doing in the, in, in, in the corner? That has to be investigated. 
because I don't see how legalizing cannabis should come to the front burner in the Nigerian economy. Agriculture is there. Mineral resources on that is there. The stones in, 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 our, in our towns and uh, all over the place have not been converted to marble. And yet, the, we are talking of legalizing cannabis in order to end foreign exchange. I think it's a good summary and conclusion. The three species have been mentioned. There are two major products mentioned. Uh, Mutantis mutandis, CBD is, is responsible for the therapeutic properties. THC for the psychotropic properties. Countries that have legalized cannabis produce only recreational or medicinal cannabis, which contains 0 0.5 to, oh, sorry, 0.3% THC or less. The cannabis indigenous to Nigeria has almost exclusively THC that is cured, to, uh, that, ha that has exclusively THC, 140 to 1, skewed in favor of THC. Jurisdictions that have legalized cannabis have effective and efficient regulatory control systems. They have tracking and monitoring mechanisms. Here, we cannot even monitor anything. Here, our regulators have no-go areas. The re regulation can take place in my family, in my pharmacy, but can they go take place in areas where you don't know the, the, the proprietor? A whole market for drugs, who goes there to regulate? Of course, nobody will blame them because life has no duplicate. Has government empowered them? Has government demilitarized these drug markets, medicine markets, to make it possible for them to be enforced? If cannabis is regulated and then they have shops to, to do that, how are we sure that regulators will dare go near them, except if they uh, are going to be dispensed in pharmacies? But uh, I am not even amused by, 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 by the thought that only pharmacies will be allowed to uh, dispense such cannabis, even if come to pass, because we know that it's only registered pharmacies that dispense um, uh, prescription only medicines. But that is as a matter of law. But uh, de facto distributors are not in the pharmacies, are not the pharmacies. The factor distributors to 80% of the medicines we have around us are in the no-go areas. And so how can you complicate issues to that extent of legalizing cannabis where they, they, they cannot be checked or regulated? From the point of view of utilitarianism and consequentialism, Legalizing cannabis in Nigeria will make the country a nation of lunatics. Take it or leave it, but that is what is going to happen. Contrary to the view being brandished that legalizing cannabis will end Nigeria foreign exchange, I think otherwise. It is my considered view that this is mere illusion because the Nigerian cannabis is very toxic. And in fact, it is lethal. Above all, the international narcotic control agencies will ensure that no particle of it will leave the borders of Nigeria. And unfortunately, if all the cannabis, when the lead is removed, that the, all the cannabis to be produced are now let loose to the streets, then um, we will have psychiatric hospital every local government area of Nigeria. Conclusion, Nigeria should trash the thought of legalizing cannabis, except it wants to go into and the exercise of legislative rascality. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, wow. this hourly
uh, expository. This this deep, and uh, is unfortunately those people who believe what we have in Nigeria is good can begin to test their 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 wits now to see whether what we want to legalize is for any foreign exchange or to produce generation of lunatics. Thank you so much, Pharmacist Chair Dimodi, for this depth of uh, exposition. It's a very welcome uh, presentation. Thank you so much. So we're going to be going right away to the next session now, which is time for people in the house to make their comments, their questions. Please kindly put your question in the chat room or you can raise your hand and then we'll come back to you in one minute as uh, we share one uh, of the adverts from one of the from our sponsor of this to this event. So we'll be back in one minute and uh, just put your question as that session will be taken on shortly. And uh, I'll be inviting pharmacist Foluke Akini Royi to take that session. A healthy and a vibrant baby, lively, bright, and happy child. Born a baby is what you need, and it's here for you to give your baby first relief from cold, fever, and pain. For quality drug and care, born a baby is here for you. Naturally, babies cannot speak. All they do is cry whenever they are sick. And you know, a happy baby makes a happy mother. When your baby is going through aches, pains, and other feverish conditions, treat your baby well. Use Bona Babe Syrup from the stable of Bond Chemical Industries Limited. Bona Babe. If symptoms persist after two days, consult your doctor. Bona Babe. Bona Babe. Your baby is relieved. So let me welcome Pharmacist Foluke to take on this next session. Pharmacist Akini Royi, over to you. Ben, you're not here. Don't know. Good afternoon. Hello. Yep. Hi. Hello. 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 Are you, please, you don't want it from your mouth. Can you please mute yourself no. if you are not oh. talking? <laughs> Good afternoon, okay. my esteemed colleagues and uh, very capable speakers. In fact, we have had a very uh, interesting discussion between our three speakers. Professor Ray Ozolwa, we thank you so much. Dr. Noel Wanang and Dr. Chie Dumodi, you have been very wonderful. And what I can summarize in um, the three discussants is the fact that they are, have a consensus in that legalizing cannabis in Nigeria will do more harm than good. That is, there will be nothing, a country that is already having issues in terms of its, the sanity of its, uh, of its indigenes. Now wanting to legalize cannabis is only going to raise a country full of lunatics, to put it mildly. Because if uh, somebody is uh, if it's lunatic that is only going to be let loose, then, then we can say that person is only doing themselves, only their, themselves harm. But then it's going to unleash a lot of issues. And the essence of wanting to legalize uh, this cannabis, which is mainly for increasing foreign exchange, will be defeated because, you know, of the, uh, the kind of cannabis that we don't even know the composition. We know that cannabis has two major important ingredients apart from hundreds of chemical constituents that confer to the drug therapeutic and psychotropic properties. And most of the times, the is that of the therapeutic effect that they can even be useful. So it defeats the purpose. 
And um, without taking too much of our time, because we really want questions to be answered, um, we will take, I see hands that have been raised and I'm gonna take them one at a time. And I want to appeal to our esteemed colleagues on the platform to please make it to the you know, short question to the point so that we can take many questions. So I would like to start with um, pharmacist Odina, Odina Kachi. Please, um, I see your hand raised. I will start with your question. If you will mute yourself and please quickly give us your question. I see all the, after that, uh, I will take it in order of how the hands came, uh, came up. Please forgive me, sorry, not a seniority or, you know, but in terms of how the hands came up. So, pharmacist Odi, Odi Nakachi, please uh, ask your question. Thank you. Hello. Hello, good afternoon or good evening. Hello. Yeah, we can hear can you. Can you hear me? Can, hear you. can hear you. We can hear you, Michael. Okay, yes, good evening. Uh, my question is a direct one. Uh, uh, but first and foremost, I want to thank you for having this uh, conversation. It's uh, an enlightening one. And it's something I believe is a big thing to do uh, because uh, we, if you look at uh, the current situation of uh, things in the world, Nigeria hasn't so much been willing to participate in, in, in growth and development as per se, you know, to some extent. Now, uh, my question is just being in two phases. One, uh, why does it seem as if this uh, conversation was basically in one direction, as if we were outrightly trying to say no to cannabis? Uh, then two, rather not cannabis, but uh, the use of cannabis, CBD oils, uh, and its component in various forms. Then two, second question, uh, most of the, uh, uh, many of our presenters have made comments about how Nigeria isn't ready. Uh, that shouldn't be an argument. I believe we should look at how can we make Nigeria ready? Uh, instead of looking for excuses or using some words like uh, uh, someone, uh, one of the presenters, Professor, once said, uh, said earlier that people are doing something in secret and they want to find a way to make it in open, to the open. Uh, uh, the second presenter mentioned, uh, used a word like, uh, uh, the, a kind of very aggressive word to some people who use cannabis for their personal reasons or whatever reason they use it for. Uh, uh, but I don't think we should, we should bash a particular group of people or, 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 or group of uh, indigents or whatever group it is who have been using this drug for a while, you know, in the, for their own personal reasons, fine. Now, we are looking at cannabis as one of those grasses people go and buy on the road to smoke, to get uh, a certain feeling or highness or whatever we, way we want to describe that. But if we do just that, aren't we being just myopic? I think we should ask the right question. How can we make Nigeria ready for development in the medical sector, for growth and development in the pharmaceutical sector, in cosmetics, for example? Because uh, some research, many research have shown, so shown that cannabis oil is very much beneficial even to skin cancer. So uh, we should be looking at the positive aspect of how we can get ready for that and not bashing it outrightly like most of our presenters have done today. You know, that's my angle, and those are just my questions. And I, I hope maybe I can get like real answers to all that. Because we have mentioned all the negative aspects of cannabis, which comes from the assumption of people who smoke it. From what I understand, people want to get high, people want to become irresponsible, people want to become, there's another word I'm not trying to remember, which was mentioned earlier today, which I think is quite unfair also to use. But we can regulate cannabis, we can regulate, if you could regulate Panadol, Tramadol, and other kind of uh, pharmaceutical drugs, why can't you also put up measures to regulate the use of cannabis? Thank you. Very much, pharmacist Odina Kachi. Do we take all the questions and then we can take 
note of the uh, questions, please. So please, the please next person, questions. Yes. Yes. The next person I would like to call is uh, Dr. Solomon. Please unmute yourself. Hello. Can you hear me? Questions. Yes. Can you yes. hear me? Yes. Yes. I I and am delighted. I am delighted to participate. Yes. Okay. Okay. I will. I will. I'm delighted to participate in this discourse, and my regard goes to the trial that presented on this. It's very wonderful. I agree with them in entirety and in total that a toxicological profile is more than the pharmacological profile, and I agree that Nigeria should plow into more of plants that has been researched in a lot of arrays of schools of pharmacy in Nigeria, and put them into use, which will reflect it economy of Nigeria, like Gangrenoma latifolia, Afromoma meliguata, which qualis. All those ones have actually established pharmacological potentials. And uh, they should be encouraged to go into that. And I agree with Barista Chirimori that Nigeria will turn into a country of lunatics if eventually it's legalized. So I, I distance a bit from the last speaker who said that there are still benefits like in terms of oil and in respect to dermatological use. But you should try to understand that even if we begin to allow that dramatical use, some people will start even drinking the oil because the effect will still be there to give them the feelings which we are agitating for that is not right to be used in Nigeria. So I agree in total that cannabis, that Nigeria is not matured. They don't have the capacity. They don't have the enablement for them to legalize cannabis in Nigeria. Thank you. And thank you. And God bless all of us. Amen. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. My, uh, my able uh, chairman, uh, can you please, um, Pharmacy Samuel Adekola, please lower your hand and unmute yourself. You are next. Oh, thank you very much, uh, my sister. And let me also use the point to thank uh, the organizer of this discourse and thank very specially. Uh, our distinguished presenters. I have quite a number of comments quickly. Uh, from the last one, the last uh, speaker, I mean, last uh, comment of the fact that if CBD is, CBD oil is allowed for legalization, that won't people be drinking it? Well, I think uh, that's a lot of misinformation because we all know, and even from today's presentation, that CBD has no psychoactive activity. So the question of CBD now causing psycho problem probably will not, be, will not arise. Mm. That is by the way. I'm also happy that uh, uh, at least one or two of this, the people who responded also have also talked about the issue of some of the languages that were used particularly on attacking people who are located. By the grace of God today as a pharmacist, I am one of those who believe that Nigeria can legalize cannabis. I am not a smoker. And let me also tell the mm -hmm. professor that I don't smoke. And by the grace of God, I will never smoke. Like I said in one discourse, I have seen cannabis grow from my childhood even when I don't know anything about it. And to the point, to the extent that even those that were growing it, that I know in my father's firm, where I grew up, I did not see one of them who has actually, from that day to now, I've not seen one of them who has gone lunatic. And this can only be substantiated by the fact that from some of the readings, we have not done research, I have not done researches, but for some of the readers, one of the points that alluded to this fact is the fact that those who succumb, who become lunatic because of cannabis are people who genetically have history, family history of lunacy. Yeah. So I am not a researcher. I have not done that. But that is the reading I have. That's to support my whole experience with what I saw and I grew up with as a child. Secondly, or thirdly, uh, there was allusion to the fact that we do not have capacity in Nigeria. Now we lack knowledge of the species, 
that grow in Nigeria. But unfortunately, I think one of the professors, I mean, one of the presenters said, Nigeria's which is has highest number of THC. Well, I do not know where that research comes from. We'll be willing to read from that. But from a substantiated research recently conducted by Dr. Hales McGregor, a pharmacist from Nigeria, and currently the president and professor, president and professor of biopharmaceutics and pharmacy technology, and currently dean of faculty of uh, school pharmacy in Ontario, mm -hmm. Canada, came to make, came to those states and pick the cheese that is growing up in those states. And the result he brought back confirmed that the, that species that is growing up in has the highest number, has the greatest percentage of CBD. And this, in fact, the recommendation was that is the best in all the species that we have in the world. I'm quoting Dr. Hales McGregor, a pharmacist and the president, professor of biopharmaceutics. For people in Nigeria who talks about researchers, I don't think there's a research is if a professor or a researcher in Nigeria can come out and beat his chest and said, Oh, I have done this much on cannabis. Because I have. today, I'm here. I okay, have. sir. Because today, cannabis in Nigeria is legalized. I mean, sorry, is illegal. So even getting it with you will be regarded as being legal. And that is why researchers in Nigeria, I mean, except if we say it otherwise, that researches to cannabis in Nigeria is legalized. So, which is one of the things we are talking about as pharmacists. My own support for cannabis has nothing to do with what the government of Ondo State is pushing. But I take my position yeah, from the position of FIP. Position of FIP. By God's grace, today I am a council member of FIP. And the discussion of, F of cannabis in FIP for some of us who are regular FIP, uh, those of us who know that this will be my 12th, I mean, if we have had the last one, it will be my 12th Syria FIP attendance. And by God's grace, I'm always very punctual at lectures and what goes on there. So I'm sorry, sir. Yeah, let me just quickly make this point. The position of FIP is that yes. in 2013, I mean, discussion on even the use of cannabis has for recreational started in 20, 2013. And by 2017, of course, you become very controversial at a fifth council level. And the, the, the council of FIP set up, set up a committee on it, the bureau. And by 2017, the council statement of cannabis was released in 2018, which was approved at the FIP council that we had at Scotland. And the, the, the statement reads that government, both to government and to pharmacists, that were for the pharmacists, pharmacists should be involved and they should, and their professional body should be involved in, let me just read it straight in a sentence. Yes, we have a um, very little time. I have yes, about one questions. Where appropriate, pharmacists should be engaged and their professional association around the question of cannabis, marijuana, for medicinal purposes, with view of developing rational and effective policy in this regard, and not castigating, saying that we should be involved, and that is getting ourselves to be involved. We should not sit back and continue to say the negative about cannabis. Uh, the issue of we have other drugs, as been as, as, as been as uh, Professor Ray says, oh, we have other drugs for glaucoma. Why are we chairman, talking about the benefits? I appreciate yes. you. OK. Well, I appreciate you, sir. It's a question. You have a question for us? I have 12 more hands that are up. I appreciate you. Obviously, this is not going to be the last discussion on this issue because it's a controversial issue and people are divergent in their opinion. So if you'd like to ask your last question, sir. My last I question, let me ask, that. that has to do with human rights issue. If you are saying Nigeria is not right for cannabis legalization, which indeed what is being uh, advocated at this, at this point or at this time is the, is the 
legalization of the control cultivation and not legalizing cannabis as, and that's the mistake we are making, legalizing for recreational use. No person, not even the law, I mean, not even the bill that is being uh, advocated, right, I mean, that is very considered, is advocating legalization for recreational use. It's talking about medicinal and industrial use. And to the extent that even smoking of cannabis Thank will continue you. to be illegal, we must understand this, we must have this perspective, the right perspective Thank of what is being discussed. Let us take a look at this. And we're talking about, so the human rights issue, I'm sorry, in 2019. Yes, sir, we got it. My question is, yes, yes, that's the, the human rights issue. Okay, well, I, I, I wanted to say, I wanted to just explain the human rights issue. Oh, Mr. Chairman, we need to go. We need to move, please. So Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, we have so many people. Yes. Thank you. 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 Okay. Um, well, um, um, I, uh, the various aspects, what has been considered by the, the speaker, uh, my own, the, the way I feel about the whole thing is that why the government wants to benefit from revenues or, or things that other nations are benefiting from, they should make sure that when they formulate policy, that the, the, the finished products by, by the pharmaceutical company, the price does not get out of the hand of the people that really need the products. Because if the cost that has been put in has um, become too high for the people that will really benefit from the products, then the ordinary people that need the product, we rather go to the black market. So they have to, these are part of the things that I think they should consider. Even as they consider the harms and the public health uh, needs must be balanced. They have to look at the various parts, aspects of the whole issue. Another thing, the, way, the thing I, I think should be looked at critically is the way the company that has legalized the medicinal use, um, what's the, their own experience? We should look at the experience, the experience of Canada, Zimbabwe, or Lesotho, uh, because at least we should we, we should look at the experience of African countries that have legalized it for medicinal use, or they are about legalizing it. Uh, we should not just look at the experiences of people of, of places like Canada. Let's come back home to Africa to look at their own experience so that at the end of the day, Nigerians will benefit from it rather than reaping adverse effects. That's my own contribution. Thank you. Thank you. I truly appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Please let's take more questions uh, so that people can speak their mind. Can I have uh, pharmacist Ado Mohammed? Please lower your hand and speak quickly, please. I got Hello, a few I'm actually, more hands. I'm actually, I'm actually a medical doctor. I'm not a pharmacist, but I've been trained in pharmaceutical medicine. Okay. I've been research and development industry for the last 20 years or so. And my areas of expertise is cannabinoid okay. drug development. I'm glad that somebody mentioned okay. actually one of the first compounds that we brought into the world, the first cannabis-based medicine, which is Sativex. At that time, I was working as a medical director of GW Pharmaceuticals in the United Kingdom. Now, the issue of um, uh, cannabis and cannabis legalization is twofold. On one side is the legal component of it, and the other one is the scientific sort of medicinal. Now, uh, I'm not really terribly happy to hear that Nigeria is not ready. Well, Nigeria is ready because what you think about cannabis, I don't look at it as a, as a, as a recreational drug. I actually see it as a medicinal product. So the question of whether Nigeria is ready or not is just a matter of conviction. In other words, if Nigerian authorities, if Nigerian government is aware that uh, medicine can be made out of this plant, 
it's up to Nigerian government to put in the necessary structure to look at both the legal and the regulatory component of it. It's as simple as that. United Kingdom, where GW Pharmaceutical is based and the first medis, uh, uh, company to bring medis, uh, cannabis-based medicine didn't start straight away. There were legal structures in place in anticipation of potential use of uh, cannabis as medicine. It's the same thing was is in Canada. That's why um, uh, this country are still in the forefront of medicinal drug development from cannabis. And I've been hearing people talking about CBD and THC. Well, there are about 101 also cannabis, uh, cannabinoids, including THCB, including cannabigerol. They are all currently in drug development and we've been doing them, uh, we've been developing drug over time. So in summary, uh, it's not the cannabis we're talking about, it's cannabis-based medicine we're talking about. There are right. legal systems that can be put in place and there are I scientific the, systems that need uh, to be put in place. So if Nigeria understand that there are a lot of unmet medical needs that can be used, uh, uh, can be uh, uh, treated using uh, 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 drug development cannabis, then it's up to Nigerian government to put this structure in place, the scientific and the legal component to make sure that mm -hmm. this is done uh, legally and scientifically. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Adol Mohammed. Uh, we will please appreciate that. We would like to call you later and get more information. We know time is limited and you have a lot to share. Yes, please, absolutely. Uh, yes, I'm you. still in, the, in cannabis drug development. I'm still in drug development. And for the last couple of years, I've been doing exactly that in the industry at global level. Yes, thank you so much. We appreciate your contribution. Uh, we're going to uh, now take a question from uh, pharmacist Ejiro Foibo. We have a lady coming up. Please, very short, please. I know okay. there's so many people who want to ask questions. Yes, thank you very much. I want to say a big thank you to the organizers and the presenters so far. Uh, from what um, we have all seen, I think there is no doubt that uh, we are all in agreement that there are benefits, but our fear as Nigerians is our lack of uh, being able to control the use. We, we all agree that there is nothing in this country that has ever been controlled from our food to water to drugs. We are pharmacists, majority of us on this call are pharmacists. I don't think there is any item in this country that has been effectively controlled or regulated by our government. I think that is where the fear is, and that is what we should look at. Maybe in the next um, discussion, we should look at, even if we have to go, how, how is it possible? Is it possible for it to be regulated in Nigeria? Because I'm over 50 years, and uh, as a pharmacist, I'm over 25 years. I've not seen anything in my pharmacy practice. I've not seen anything, whether in pharmacy or outside pharmacy, that has been effectively regulated in Nigeria. I think that is where the problem is, and that is the area we should actually look at for so I, i'm not in support of legalizing it at this stage yes thank you uh, thank you so much god bless you my sister so let's take a um, opinion of um pharmacist eniola akideko please very short unmute yourself and lower your hand and then after i'll take uh, dr wilson Aero. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm here. I just go to the issue straight away. Uh, let me appreciate the three speakers that we had. Uh, I believe that they have done uh, justice to the issue to the extent that understand the matters that have been put to them. Please, are you hearing me? Please, are you hearing me? Yes. 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 Um, we can hear you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. I don't agree with uh, these speakers because to me, I'm sorry to say, I don't believe they have done a lot of...
he seems to have lost him. Search into the new far as cannabis is concerned. Of course, of course, they did tell us that cannabis has some benefits, medical benefits, of, and there are other many other benefits. It's used for many other things apart from for medical use. And of course, CAC, which is the issue here, is not high in every uh, species of cannabis we have in the world. The problem we are dealing with here is whether it should remain a, under the Dangerous Drug Act, which makes it an illicit drug, or we should make it uh, listed, in which case we can regulate it, the use. This is the, this is the key question here. And of course, a lot of uh, misinformation uh, also have been going on, on over a lot, uh, a, a long time now, which is that cannabis is the one responsible for most of the psychotic, psychotic cases we are having around. The truth of the matter, uh, Dr. Adekola dealt with that a little. I have lived more than 90% of my life in Ondo State. And everywhere around me, we see cannabis. The truth of the matter is that to get to, uh, to, get to, to buy cannabis is not something that is difficult. I don't know about other part of the country, but in Ondo State, in, Edo, in uh, these areas where these things are grown, it is readily available, despite the fact that it is said to be an illicit drug. And that means that to a very large extent, as we speak, there is virtually no control. That is what my, my, my perception as it is. Because with, 20, okay. with 200 naira, I can, so I can within, within five minutes distance, I can get marijuana to buy. And that is the situation everywhere around here. That means... Uh, thank what we are you so much, about, sir. Thank you, sir. What's the last word for us today? The last word is that if we are talking about legalizing it, it is not supposed to be a free-for-all situation. It is bringing it under some form of regulation where it's going to be used for whatever purpose we have identified it to be useful, you know, to be beneficial for. And in that way, we are... We have identified the fact that regulation is okay. We lost him, so let's take Dr. Wilson Aaron, please. And please, very short. And after this, that, one, min one minute one for each next question. One, one minute, ask, one, one minute. minute, yes. Please. So we one gotta minute, take please. a response and uh, last yes. one from the speakers. Yeah, last, thank you. Uh, Dr. Wilson Aaron, please lower your hand, sir. Yes, I'm trying to, uh, so that that will not right, uh, waste time. Thank you. Yes, yeah. yes, I. No, no problem. No problem. Yeah, you, you can hear me, right? Good. Yes, sir. Good. My my comments. I well, I appreciate the speakers. Uh, I'm going to speak to perspective one as a pharmacognosist, uh, and as a pharmacognosist, I think very, that uh, very short, sir. We, yeah, we should be, we should know that uh, cannabis. Uh, can be crossbred to produce specific characteristics. And uh, globally, there are about 700 strains of cannabis. And consequently, whatever cannabis that exists in this country, there are chemical varieties who can actually produce what we want. That is scientifically, one hand. As, as a professor of pharmacy administration, I want to look at this on the cost and benefit basis. Uh, looking at cost and benefit of legalizing uh, cannabis, I tend to agree with uh, all that have been said. Uh, that they, we need to have to put rational and effective policies in place uh, to precede the, the legalization of uh, 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 cannabis. And I also want us to know the oil does not only contain, even the oil that has been referred does not only really contain CBD, it has other constituents as well. And it's not necessarily the history of lunacy that determines the effect of uh, cannabis because uh, I grew up in uh, the, same, the same environment and where I grew up, uh, we in the sixties we saw we saw people who traded in this, and we saw cases of uh, a very bad cases. So I think we should just be sure that we have the structures Thank in you, place uh, before we go on. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor Wills. We appreciate you. We'll reach out to you for more information. Sorry that the time is short. Let me quickly take uh, pharmacist Babalola, whose hand is raised uh, electronically and physically. 
please, very short. I see you actively agitating. Then after that, we'll take the last que uh, question from uh, our national treasurer, uh, pharmacist Gafar Made. And then we'll have the final words from the speakers. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry. Uh, My hand more hands up. won't be able to take. Uh, please put your question on the platform. Yes, I said uh, pharmacist uh, Babalola, right? Yes. You have the floor. Hello. Hello, sir. BOT, kindly unmute yourself. Uh, well, I will try to myself. Okay. Well, Hello, are you hear hearing me now? We can hear you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. This, this is supposed to be a debate. And at the end of the day, uh, it, does, it, it is not uh, actually a debate. Uh, it seems as if uh, we have come with a mm. mindset that cannabis, cannabis is bad. No, we have to look at the other side of it. So some of us, we, we, we look at it that we are a group of scientists. We should not see anything so difficult for us. Once we have uh, 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 identified the problems, let us sit down, us either sit down, set up set up a committee to look into mm -hmm. how it can be. We are losing you, sir. Effectively control. Hello, hello? we've lost him. Can I ask hello, you hello, you? hello, hello, hello. I'm, I'm back. Please wrap up. I'm back. Uh, I want us to know that if it is medicinally legalized, it is going to be under the control of pharmacists. So we should not, at this point in time, this debate will continue. We don't know what will happen in future. What of if uh, uh, some policymakers, the politicians, they get across? Hello, hello, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? We're hearing you very well. Yeah. If, if some very set of politicians, they should, we, they should come up tomorrow. And uh, already we have seen that uh, we have condemned it and we have relegated ourselves. And other groups of people, they come up tomorrow and they take it to the challenge up and they proceed with it. And at the end of the day, our group will start to complain that we have been relegated. We, let us set up a committee to look into the problems of cannabis, how we can control it effectively. It's not legalization for recreational use. Is legalization for medicinal use. That medicinal aspect of it is our own concern. Not that uh, the government will just say, uh, you take cannabis to all over in the open market and be selling it. No, it is about this medicinal use of, as of today, and, uh, what do you call it, CBD oil. is even being sold by non-pharmacists. They, they, they make it as a network uh, networking marketing. It is not in the hands of, uh, and, they get, and they get it from some, somewhere. So we should look at it scientifically. What can we do? How to, can we control it? Because so good, we have uh, many, many legal luminaries amongst us, pharmacists. They can sit down, they can form a committee. As scientists, we should not see it as uh, being too difficult to, to surmount. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you for your contribution. That is very true. Um, there are two sides to a coin in any situation. Yes, the pros and cons uh, will be weighed and will be presented. Thank you so much, Mrs. Babalola. So let's have our um, national treasurer, Gafar Madeng. Please unmute yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Akenirai. And uh, I want to appreciate uh, the uh, presenters and uh, those that have reacted, everybody has made very good points. Um, my own concern is based on uh, a report, you know, I once read, you know, from, uh, uh, you know, United States uh, Food and Drug Administration. And, um, you know, some years back, and it's when they were thinking of changing strategies, because it was discovered that when you when you put legislation in place to ban the you know circulation of uh, some drugs 
it only it only end up creating cartels. It doesn't reduce the uh, amount of end users. It does not reduce it. It only it only end up in creating cartels and making uh, you know people making illicit money out of this. So and uh, now they're not looking at changing strategies to really go to the educating. I mean, education, educating the users. You know, that is addiction prevention now. And that was the origin of the creation of addiction prevention curriculum, you know? So that, All right, sir. you know, uh -huh. so, so that, that is one aspect. So, so, so now, you know, uh, my concern is banning cannabis, does it reduce the use? Because, we, you know, does it, does it effectively reduce the use? You know, so if it doesn't reduce the use, then we need to really now rethink that, okay, what is the best approach in, the, in terms of cost benefit? If banning it is not reducing the use, then why don't we look at another way of, okay, mm -hmm. how, do we, how do we control, you know, the cultivation? That's my own view. You know, because and banning it has not, has not reduced, right. has not so reduced the use. The use has always been there. You know, and it will never reduce the use. Yes, if thank you. Is banned, uh, so, so that, so thank that's you, my own, uh, treasurer. Point. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate there are two people that must absolutely talk. Please, uh, we have Professor uh, Peace Babanola on the platform. She's raised her hand. And then I'm going to also take Christopher Ubu and we call it a day. Please, I appreciate, I apologize, but these two people have to talk. And please, ma'am, please no uh, no unmute yourself. Professor Peace. Babalola, please, we have you on the platform. Okay. And thank you much. I know I raised my hand late. I was more or less listening and taking notes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Very well, thank ma. You I saw much. your hand. I, yes, 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 yes. I've been commenting on the chat box, but when someone said, okay, there should be a committee, and I just wanted to say, look, you have enriched that committee. PSN has set up a committee, and they actually called it a research group. Not that we're going to do research, but um, we should give them a report in two weeks. So maybe the report will include research. Um, and I want to appreciate all the people that have spoken and all those that have um, made comments. And just feel like saying, if it's possible for us, our team set up by PSN, which I chair by the grace of God to collaborate with this group and we do more I think we should do more um, debates on this, maybe a, 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 a real debate now on this, so that we can come up with what can help us and help our people in Nigeria. You know, as the chairman, I cannot take a position on this, but I think we can collaborate with this group that has organized this, and I think we should hold another one very soon and probably invite uh, more stakeholders so that we can get appropriate information and so that the pharmacies can also guide in this respect. In, I call it informed, um, not informed concept, but informed dissemination of, of, of information that can help our populace. Thank you very much. Thank you so no, much, thank you. Professor uh, Yes, please hold on one second. I know that uh, Ondo State also did a conference and this topic was also frontliner as a debate and we cannot exhaust it, but we're continuing to discuss it and then we're gonna get a position paper that speaks the mind of Nigeria, you know, pharmacists and professionals on the issue. So please let me have on the, I thank everybody that has spoken, all your points are valid and we appreciate you. The last person to discuss today, will be, uh, who did I mention now? Christopher, pharmacist Christopher. Ubu Christopher. Please, you have the floor. Okay, thank you. Yes, Ubu Christopher. Uh, professor thank Kutler. you. Yes, I hope, hello, I hope you can, you can hear me. We are hearing you. Hello. Very well, sir. Okay, thank you very much, my professor colleagues. Very well, yes, uh, very I, well. Yes, I'm, I'm privileged to, to be in your midst and at least I am our colleagues mm -hmm. and I want to speak as a, uh, an addiction professional and uh, a pharmacist working with a, a mental institution, the Federal New Psychiatric Hospital, to be precise. And uh, I, uh, I want to be, uh, be emphatic on this issue in the sense that 
I, on, I listened to our, our presenters. Uh, the presenters, they did us very, very proud. But emphatically, what uh, Professor Chini Dumodi mentioned, he was asking, one is asking about cannabis. Asking, is it Nigeria cannabis we are talking of, That's or which other issue. cannabis? That is the issue. So, so, so I, I That's the issue. So, so when we at uh, mental, and uh, I, I must speak precisely of uh, 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 neuropsychiatry to Yaba, because the major problem we're having is that the level of uh, THC in the cannabis in other ones, we are, which are that, uh, most of our, our clients have used, when they come back to Nigeria and they, uh, they, they, use, they use Nigeria own, the level of psychosis they do develop and come to Yaba and see the level of overwhelmness oh. we are having. We are having an issue of controlling the youth. They are getting down below the age of 15. Mm -hmm. Let me just talk about it. So on that ground, we are in as much as we want to talk about illegalizing cannabis, we have to do thoroughly on the ground. What are we really going to do? That's the question. Which other cannabis? Which level? And on what aspect are you trying to do? Yes, cannabis is readily available. And that's the major problem we are, our people are having. Because even with the, the list of 10, 10 naira of, or there about least amount of money, you, you can get it close by, even within us in Yaba. But we are talking about how can we, on that ground, ensure that we, even if it's going to be like the control, and then ensuring that the appropriate one, like any other medicine, we are not really not cannabis to be a medical product, but are we ready to regulate to ensure that we give us a potential medicinal use, or is it a recreational use? I want to. So I. The members that are on this team, even the legal people that are on the, and, in our, let us make sure that we get us our, our prepared properly. And even if they are going to legalize it or whatever, to and properly informed and properly involved, we are doing. Let me not take much of your time. Thank you very much for the opportunity to give it to me. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody that has spoken. I took so many of you. I think maybe one or two I omitted. I apologize. It is not intentional. We've gone past the time. We will now have, I thank everybody that has spoken. All your points are valid. We'll reach out to some of you after the discussion for more information. Please, let's have the, uh, the, the speakers just comment and give us a last word on in each of their own perspective. Thank you so much. I can start with uh, uh, Professor Ray Ozolua, who was the one first one that talked. Let's, let's have your last word on the issue. Yo, thank you very much, madam. Can you hear me clearly, everyone? We are hearing you, Professor yeah, Zulu. Well. Hello. We, can. we are hearing you, Professor Zulu. Can you hear me? Yes, we are, we are hearing you. Yes, we can hear you, sir, very much. Oh. Yes. Okay, thank you. If you can hear me, yes. Well, I, let, me again once, let me once again thank the organizers of this uh, debate. To me, it is a debate. I do not think that they set out um, looking for people with same mindset. It just turned out by sheer coincidence that the three of us who spoke, spoke in one direction. And people have ventilated the issues from different angles. So it is indeed a debate. The mere fact that some persons are dissenting makes it even a more robust debate. And it seems to me that it's something we can carry forward. Now, I, I, I've been able to sift out certain things. I do not think that anybody is opposed to legalizing cannabis-based drugs if they meet the criteria for importation or processing or manufacturing in Nigeria. I do not think any of us who has spoken is against that. What we're talking about is we say the plant, cannabis, you want to legalize it. They legalize the distribution, the cultivation and all of that. We know that our structures, as we speak now, they are not strong enough We've not been able to enforce any law. I mean, how then do we want to add something else? That's the issue. So for me, legalizing cannabis as a plant, whether it has low THC or it has uh, no THC at all, it is just out of the question. That is my take. Uh, the products arising from cannabis very well. They can go through the, um, the, the mill. NAFDA can go through, I mean, I see whether NAFDA could register them, whether the federal ministry would be acceptable to the federal ministry of health. And they are brought in. And I insist, there are, uh, we have um, so many medicinal plants in Nigeria that have been thoroughly researched. We can look in this direction. Uh, and then the last thing to say, man, somebody said, oh, well, if uh, banning has not reduced the use, why do we have to? Why do we still have to uh, keep banning it? We can as well ask the the person who asked that question. 
If banning has not reduced the use, what will legalizing it lead to? You say, okay, uh, everybody goes to a church. In spite of the number of Christians and all of that, there is crime. What if there were no churches? That is the other side of it. So I want to conclude, and uh, if the organizers permit, I would like to make my thoughts available to the platforms, and then uh, it can be read, because some of the questions that I have read from the platform, it seems clear that some persons actually didn't listen, um, or maybe network failure or so, so they didn't understand some of the um, some of the arguments that I put forward. Thank you very much once again, and God bless every one of us. We appreciate you. Thank you so much, Professor Ray. We, you really put out a very extensive uh, presentation earlier. We will definitely reach out and we'll collect everything and there'll be everything will be communicated to everybody. Uh, uh, that that permit me to add, so please, permit me to add that one professor, Hope Obiawu, mm -hmm. is a Nigeria-based researcher on cannabis. So it's not true to say that, look, I mean, people haven't been working on cannabis in Nigeria. Professor Hope Obiawu has uh -huh, a lot yeah. to say on cannabis. Yeah, He's a pharmacist. We can reach out to him as well. Thank you. I appreciate that. I know that was brought out by somebody. I appreciate your remembering to respond. Please let me now have the last word from uh, the, um, Dr. Chiedu Modi. No, actually, Dr. Noel Wanang was the next speaker. Is your last word, Noel Wanang, your last response on the issue? And then the last but not the least will be Dr. Chiedu Modi. Let's have a pharmacist Modi. I think a Professor Noel, Noel Wanang is having a connection issue. So, pharmacist Modi, you can make your position. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can you? Yes, we yes. can hear Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this uh, opportunity. Um, I want to underscore what uh, Ray has said. Um, Professor Obiawu has done great work in cannabis. That is why when some people came to say that no work has been done, it is just preposterous. It's, you know, he has done a lot of work and I will recommend him to the PSN if they are pushing this matter forward. So that is for that. Um, the, the topic for discussion is not whether there are good things from cannabis. The issue is legalizing cannabis. And what comes to mind is legalizing the cannabis in Ondo, legalizing the cannabis in Sapele, or legalizing the cannabis in Edo State. That is the issue. So that I say, please, it is a no-go area because it is legal. It sticks to the cannabis brain receptor permanently, and it is irreversible. Three of us were not selected to have the same opinion. In fact, since I discovered that uh, cannabis, that um, Ray, Professor Ray Oswaldo is going to debate uh, to talk on this issue, I think he has been avoiding me, and I have made. I want to tell him that I have made conscious efforts to avoid him. And we came up with the same opinion. Well, it's just such a coincidence. And um, for those who think that they're legalizing, can they want to legalize cannabis for medicinal research? Please, cannabis is available for medicinal research for all sorts approved within 24 hours. If it's not approved, ask Professor Bion how he gets the approval for his own cannabis. People shouldn't come to, with mindset. Well, for those who sell cannabis and they're not uh, psychotic, I will tell you that in those states, those who send children for prostitution, their children are not prostitutes. Thank you. Well, it Thank seems that- uh, so We appreciate okay. you. Uh, do we have- uh, It Dr. seems uh, that Professor- Is he available uh, now? Uh, it seems he's off the call. And basically, I think the position of the two speakers can survive for his position. Well, the two speakers have actually positioned themselves and what they have spoken about. And I think we have a lot of things to take home from there. So we can call right now on the pharmacist uh, Richard uh, Ladapo. Okay. 
for the vote of thanks and for us to round up this call. From FMS's letter for Richard, you are welcome to the call. Pharmacist, ladder for Richard. Sorry, uh, sorry, I didn't know my phone was still on mute. Okay. I want to thank you, my chairman. I want to use this opportunity to thank everyone that has been part of this program. Uh, the topic is a hot. Uh, uh, hello. Hello. Uh, I think you like are my, echoing. Yeah. Yes, that's why I'm surprised. I don't have any other device. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, we are hearing you. Yes. Okay. Uh, the topic is a very uh, is a very controversial one. And fortunately, unfortunately, our three speakers for today seem to have aligned in one direction. And so people think that maybe it was planned. No, I don't think so. And I think we'll probably have a second discussion on this in future and try to get people with divergent views. But all in all, I would like to thank the speakers because they have done justice from their own research. And everyone too that has been part of it, uh, from the professors we have, we have people from virtually every state in Nigeria, people from outside the country. I would like to thank Professor Babalala, that was, that the current Vice Chancellor, Vice Chancellor of Queensland University for being part of it. Uh, one of our respondents, the chairman of the National Association of Community Funds, Mrs. Dr. Sam, thank you for coming. I would like to thank you from the Francis Council of Nigeria. I saw Dr. Ametu from NAVDAC. Different, different people uh, came on board, and we have lots of interesting people that came to speak. Uh, at this juncture, I would like to thank everyone that despite the fact that uh, for sure we spent too much time and took a long time in this program, people see it. As at now on this panel, we still have about 138 people at all. So I would thank everybody that has come. The speakers from Professor Riozolova, Pharmacist C. Duomodi, and Professor Wanang for their uh, exposition to us. And many of us have had more understanding as to the product and so what we want to do and all that. And so I say, everybody, thank you for coming. And uh, we wish you to have a nice weekend. And as we go on, let us do our research, just think more on it and see what and what we can do uh, on this particular topic. Until we come your way next month for another topic, we say bye bye to you and thank you for coming. Well, thank you very much, for this, uh, Richard. There is one person I want to talk. Uh, there is one person from a substance abuse sector, uh, non so much uh, Maduka. Uh, let's hear you one minute before you before we before we end this one. Please mute. Can you please mute any everybody? Uh, now, so Maduka on mute, and let's have you in one minute. I'll be having so much uh, from you at the end. Now, so Maduka, oh, I think it seems she left. Anyway, uh, uh, just like uh, I think he's back. Okay, now so. Yeah, I think he's back. Are you sure he's back? I'm marrying somebody in the background. Maduka, no, she's not. No, she's okay. not there. It's not there. Well, why don't you so, keep confidence? Would have loved it on this matter. At least I was raising my hand even before Q and A. Okay, you want something to say? Okay, one minute. Yes, please. Okay, I uh, want you to confidence from Delta State, and then my yes. deep uh, regards to Dr. Ray, Professor. Um, he was my lecturer in school then, and I really appreciate his uh, contribution. However, uh, I totally disagree that there has oh. been a debate because uh, when uh, debating something like this, we have to talk about benefit versus risk. And uh, debunking some things, psychosis. Psychosis in uh, cannabis usually occurs uh, when cannabis use is started early. That's from childhood. You know, adults, however, show different um, uh, different a different outcome to cannabis use when started as an adult actually it's use and uh, CBD currently sold in Nigeria you understand so I think uh, using CBD legalizing um, uh, or growing cannabis for CBD production should be something that we should look into 
because you know it's already making money in Nigeria. A lot of people are selling this, you know. So its legalization should not be just for recreational use, but also for its medicinal use and also industrial use because cannabis, a, a, a species of cannabis, is used as a fire retarder. Fire retarder. You understand? If you put it, mix it with your cement or your your block and use it for your house, your house. In, in, a, in a fire emergency, you know, it will not catch fire because it's a retarder, fire retarder. So all these things okay. you do. Thank you very much, made. Confidence. Uh, yes. I think uh, you have made your very good points. Uh, just like we have been told, this is a continuous discussion. It will not end here. So we believe strongly as we come your way again, you will be able to pick some of this information. And now Sumaduka is back. One minute because I saw that uh, there was major push that you have something to say and you are from substance abuse sector. Please, one minute, Nansoma Duka, unmute on, on, on yourself and just talk to us in one minute so that we can run up. Nansoma Duka. So, so, I don't, maybe you can unmute yourself. Do you, um, you mute all of them? Maybe you should unmute him. Well, in the absence of any other uh, thing, I think it's a nice time to end this call. And I believe strongly we cannot exhaust the opportunity we have in our hand. And we just like uh, Professor Peace Babalala has also given an opinion, we'll be glad to work with the committee in ensuring that we'll be able to put these debates in a greater scale. Thank you all, and uh, we have a lovely weekend. Enjoy yourself and have a very wonderful time. Thank you. When we call again, we expect to see you again. Thank you very much for being with us. Have a wonderful evening. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Good Thank night. You. We Good night. Everything. Thank you. We appreciate yes, it. Thank you. 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 Thank you.